Manx Radio Podcasts, powered by Shaw. Women Today. Welcome to the Women Today podcast. We have this afternoon been joined by Eloise White, artist Hello. and animator, current artist in residence at the Sale Gallery. Um, it's been lovely hearing about all about your work and also the themes behind it, which are clearly very powerful because they're based on your own personal experience with, with mental health issues. Yeah. I'm intrigued by something we didn't get to talk about on the show today because we ran out of time. Yeah. About the turning point when you were saying that uh, originally you planned to do something entirely different that yeah. was much sort of lighter or more positive with your work. For the, mm-hmm. for the residency project and then you were inspired by somebody in particular <laughs> and we didn't get a chance to talk about this so I'd just like you to tell me who it was and how that came about I was very inspired by Simon Buttermore um, I was very gutted that I didn't get to meet him before he unfortunately passed away I was still at university at the time um, but coming back and being introduced to him you know as an artist that was exhibiting obviously I learned a bit of background I learned about his work and the kind of person that he was and the more people that I met and just heard these incredible stories about him and and got to see his work and these animations that were just crazy experimental and I was so inspired to just be like why am I not doing exactly what I want to be doing because obviously didn't stop Simon so yeah really inspired me so there's, there was par- there's parallels not only with the medium that you work with, but also sort of the way he approached work too. Definitely. He was, yeah, his work was very much sort of open, honest. And at the time when I had this sort of turning point, I was feeling quite vulnerable. So that to me was also terrifying at the same time to sort of put myself out there. But yeah, I just thought, well, why not? Because I reacted so well to his work. So um, I thought, well someone else is probably going to react well to mine and hopefully people can relate to it as well. And I suppose at the end of the day, we are, as much as we're a very creative nation, and I do think we very definitely punch above our weight with regards to the size of our population <laughs> when it comes to art. At the same time, we are a small population. And so really, the likes of yourself and Simon are quite unique in what you do here. Yeah, um, I mean, especially compared to the UK where, you know, they've got animation um, studios left, right, center you know they're everywhere coming back here and you know explaining to people what I do I get the same sort of like oh wow that's just so different and it was the same reaction I got as to when I was telling people what course I was going off to do because I mean even my course in the UK is still very specialized you know stop motion animation and puppet making I think by graduation with people sort of shifting around um classes and changing award titles I think there were three of us three or four of us at the end so graduation was interesting to go through all these massive classes and then it was like and you're done (laughs) (laughs) do you know what the other two are doing now yeah um, my friend Andy Bell is uh, working at McKinnon Saunders on and off Uh, obviously he gets work when they get work he makes the most incredible puppets you've ever seen Um, he's just yeah complete natural Um, he's another source of huge inspiration for me because he is just so do what you want to do and that's something that I didn't sort of get a hold of until third year and I was like I'm going to do exactly what I want to do and I'm so glad that I did. (laughs) I think people can tell though can't they viewers or or, um, visitors to galleries can tell if you're not genuine with your work. Yeah and that's something I thought about when I did change to this subject because I thought, you know, if I was look, if how would I react if I was going into my own exhibition with this work? How do you, like, you know, I tried to sort of visualise how I would feel at the end of this going into it. And I just hated it. Absolutely hated the idea of it. Because I knew that I would walk around and just be like, this is not what I wanted to do. You know, deep down, this is not what I wanted to, to show. Because this is such a huge platform that I've got as, you know, an exhibiting artist in one of the, you know, big galleries on the Isle of Man which it is you know the sale is a massive space to fill I was like I need to do something that's re- you know not just relevant but is personal to me and I have that passion behind it because you can just tell you're right you can tell if someone's not behind a project because it shows and you've had incredible reaction even so far even though it's only been open for a yeah. few days <laughs> yeah I've been really like pleasantly surprised I mean even just on the opening night I was worried that people wouldn't react to it because obviously it's such a personal portrayal of what happened and um, what's been going on with me I wasn't sure if that many people would connect to it because the imagery some of it is very abstract and it's just what I've had in my head 
But the amount of people that came up to me that night, some of them I've known for years and said, I get it, you know, I feel that too. I've had that as well. And it was so nice. And that's exactly, you know, I was saying in in the show before, I wanted to have a more relaxed atmosphere because I wanted to open up that conversation flow because that's what we should be talking about is, you know, these issues. And even if I have to prompt people with paintings, you know, and not sit everyone down on a panel, it's still a conversation that's happening and it's still just normalising this quite, you know, touchy subject. And you use, it's not just, we mentioned obviously you do animation, you've got film going on there, you've got the puppets, mm-hmm. but you will have a variety of mediums on the go, <laughs> yeah. don't you? Just talk us through what people are likely to find in the exhibition. We've got all sorts. I mean, that comes with animation is you've got, you know, things like pre-production, you've got drawing, you've got sculptures, you've got maquettes, which are basically sort of mock-ups of what the puppets or the sets might look like. You've got concept art, which comes into, you know, my past work with illustration. You've got all the films I've done, well, the best ones I've done at uni, because some of them were just awful. <laughs> um, you know, little experiments. But, you, you know, you need those to see that the good it's stuff's good. It's a learning good. process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've got a selection of about six or seven short films, um, as well as my main film, uh, Happy Medium, which is playing down the far end in this lovely cinema space that the coordinator is so graciously built for me. Um and as well as that, you've got puppets, you've got concept art, designs, uh, sculptures, paintings, collage. So, yeah, I mean, I like that. I like to try all different things. I wanted to show, you know, the variety. And obviously people can buy your work as well, which is a new thing for you yeah. in itself. Very <laughs> it's exciting. Really <laughs> is it difficult, though, from the point of view of you mentioned the puppets? Um, mm. Because we said when we were talking to you on the show, we said how there's a sort of very human element to puppets when you create them and you become very close to them. Yeah. Is it going to be difficult to let some of those go? Some of them, definitely. Yeah, one or two um, I've had in my room for you know the whole year I've been home. I had them in my rooms at uni and they always were just sort of part of the furniture. And then realising that I was going to actually have to give them to somebody, you know, I mean, they were going to buy them, but, you know, they're still, it's like giving away a child. It just (laughs) felt really weird having to put a price on these things, you know, that I'd spent so long working with. And it was like I was saying to you guys before, I mean, you end up talking to them. They're Mm -hmm. literally little, they are the little personalities. And it's nice because that's what you want out of puppets. You want them to have that personality because then it comes across in the film. But as someone who's made them, you you do grow very attached to them. So what do you think you would be doing next? And is there a chance, I know you mentioned going back to university, Mm -hmm. is there a chance you'd want to get into the world of of sort of feature film as such? Because there do seem to be, it it seems to have gone through this period of, initially with the likes of Aardman and and Tim Tim Burton, the idea of stop frame, very, very popular. And then it sort of went massively into CGI. But it seems now like there's a few real stalwarts who are coming back and saying, no, 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 we want to do things traditionally. So is there opportunity there? Well, I mean, you just have to look at something like the Clangers. You know, they've redone the Clangers. They had all the opportunity to do what they did to Bob the Builder, which I'm sorry was absolutely horrific. Um, which was to turn it CGI. That is the easier, cost-effective thing to do, but you would lose so much character. I mean, you see Bob the Builder now, it's terrifying. Mm -hmm. He's absolutely terrifying. And, you know, he's got none of the charm that you get from these little figures. It's like Pingu. You know, you can't imagine Pingu in, in CGI. It just does not work the same. So I think I would love to work on a feature, absolutely. But I don't know, I'm very... It's awful to say I'm really particular... Because, I mean, something like Leica, I admire them intensely because they are so incredible at what they do. But they start to bring in CGI and the stop motion becomes so smooth that you start to lose that sort of... It becomes almost like a grey area, like where does the stop motion end and the CGI begins? And that's what I don't like. I want Mm. it to look handmade because that's what I love. You know, the old Bagpuss films. Oh, I love No, um, the TV show. And it was just so had so much character behind it because you knew that there was someone moving the figures and like the old Ray Harryhausen films you know they were made with like the lowest technology that they had and it looks incredible because you know just how much work's gone into it you know with the handmade elements of it I mean I tried CGI and I have the utmost respect for people who can do it because it is so difficult to get a hang of CGI especially if you've been working with sort of physical, you know, paints or Mm -hmm. characters or plasticine. But 
I just don't, it's just not the same for me. It really isn't. It's wonderful when even on, on some of the old man uh, frames, if you stop framing them, you can almost see fingerprints, can't you? Yes. And, so, and you can see the way they sort of manipulated the yeah. expressions I on the faces. I love those and, yeah. <laughs> I love them. In fact, I, I heard, I'm not 100% sure on how true this is. If it is true, it's incredible. But I did hear that the Aardman features with the Wallace and Gromit's people thought they were becoming too slick so they actually started to CGI thumbprints onto the characters <laughs> I don't know how true that is but if it is I think that's absolutely adorable <laughs> it is wonderful yeah okay so just remind people then about your exhibition uh, where can they see it and how long is it on for so you can see my exhibition a happy medium on at the cell gallery in Douglas and it's on until the 23rd of July and just coming back to what we started uh, talking about at the start of this podcast, you have a photo of Simon Buttermore, <laughs> don't you? I have to mention that because I think it's so lovely and, yeah. and you were telling me how important that is to you. Yeah, we kept one. Um, I think we actually bought it off him. Andy Howland did this most incredible portrait of Simon. Um, I think it was at a Beltane festival mm. years ago. I can't remember, but it was absolutely stunning. He was such a photogenic gent. And we've kept that up in the office just because it is such a friendly face to see. And, you know, he was such a huge part of the gallery before he passed away. Um, And I actually kept one of the emails that we printed off, which because we just basically wanted to show all these different parts of how he was related to the gallery and his artwork and his life. And he actually applied. I don't know if it was if he formally applied or if he just inquired about it, the position of artist in residence. And in it, he... He says about how he wants to bring animation into the gallery and he wants to do stop motion and show the public how it's done and, you know, bring all these crazy films in. And it was such an inspiring little email. that I've just sort of kept it next to my desk (laughs) so that if I'm ever feeling a bit sort of low on morale or motivation, I've always got that there because he was just so passionate about it. It's really inspiring. Eloise, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you, Women Today. Don't sit in the slow lane. Join the fast lane right now with Shaw's all-new Superfast Plus Broadband. Enjoy more bandwidth, amazing speeds and the best value on the island from just £23.95 per month. So don't be left behind. Get a piece of the high-speed action with Superfast Plus Broadband from Shaw. For details, visit our stores in Douglas, Ramsey and Port Erin or click shaw.com. Love being Shaw. Terms and conditions apply.